You know, there are just some things that the only way we're going to get better is to practice. So we're going to practice Boolean algebraic simplification. All right. And we're going to do a couple of these expressions, a couple of these Boolean algebraic expressions, and we're going to show how they can simplify. We're going to start out with something well, hopefully a little uh, easy. So I'm going to have A or B or C bar. It's like you're running A, B, and C through a NOR gate. Remember, this is the OR gate with an inverted output. And then we're going to end this with B. All right. Now, no red flags, right? And remember, if you don't see any of the something being combined with itself, something being combined with its inverse, or something being combined with a constant, well, you probably need to kind of manipulate things around. Can't do the distributive law. Let me put a, put a warning here. It looks like you could do the distributive law by distributing B across C, B, and A. But you can't because that bar has to be done first. Let's take a look at the actual circuit and see what, I'm, what I mean. What I have is A, B, C going into an OR gate, right? And then going through an inverter. And then B is coming out and being combined with an AND gate. This is the circuit that is represented by this. Well, I can't distribute this AND across the OR because that inverter is in the way. All right, we have to figure out, we have to move that inverter before we can distribute the AND. Well, how do we do that? Remember De Morgan is our friend. De Morgan said, I can in fact move this inverter back through this OR gate, distribute it to the inputs, if I do what? If I change that OR to an AND. So what I can do is A and B and C with bars over each of those elements. So now this becomes A bar and B bar and C bar. And I can keep the parentheses ANDed with B. All right. Now, where do we go from here? Well, remember that thing called the associative law. The associative law says these parentheses can be moved back and forth. If I've got the, uh, the same operation, no parentheses or bars across multiple elements, if I have an operation, and in this case, that is done across multiple elements, I can combine them in any order that I want. Commutative law also said I can swap things back and forth. So what I can do is I can swap B bar and C bar, and then using the associative law, I can associate those two together first. Got a red flag. We've got an, an, uh, something here being combined with its inverse, right? B and B bar. Well, what happens when you combine something with its inverse, especially with an and? Well, well in this case, with an and, sorry. In the and, case of the AND, whenever you combine something with its inverse, you always have either 0 ANDed with 1 or 1 ANDed with 0. <coughs> Never do you have the case where there's 1 ANDed with 1, right? So that guy becomes a what? Becomes a 0, right? Got another red flag here, don't we? That other red flag is that constant, that 0 appeared, all right? What happens when you AND something with a zero? Anything. I mean, you can look at this as one element, right? As one element. So what we've got is something being ANDed with zero. What happens when you AND something with zero? Similar to what happens in multiplication, that just becomes a zero. And so what we have is A or B or C, the inverse of all of that, so the inverse of A or B or C, ANDed with B, that's always going to be equal zero. There is no way. You're, you're, you can create the truth table for that. Every single row is going to have an output of zero, which shows that that's, it might as well be, a, you know, it's, it's a false. It's always going to be a zero. All right. Let's do another one.
All right, let's try one more simplification. How about A or B ended with B or A bar? What's that gonna be equal to? That's kind of a weird one. Uh, I realize that that may not make sense, but you know, it's possible you might have an if statement that says something along the lines of, if A is true or B is true, and if A and B is, is true and A is, or A is not true, that's, that's that expression right there, right? Remember FOIL. FOIL was that version of the distributive law. And that said that I could take the first and them together, ORed with the outside and that together, ORed with the inside and them together, ORed with the last. So let's go ahead and do that. So first A and B, ORed with outside A and A bar, ORed with inside B and B, or with last B and A bar. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like a couple of red flags showed up. We've got one red flag right here, anything being anded with its inverse. What happens when you and something with its inverse? It's always equal to zero, right? Got another red flag right here, something being combined with itself. What happens when you combine something with itself? It's itself. So let's drop down the other two products. All right. Now, still have a red flag showing, don't we? This zero right here, what happens when you or anything with zero? Well, it turns out the zero drops out and you get A and B or with B or with B and A bar, all right? Now, there are a couple of ways we could go with this. And in fact, this is one of the cool things about Boolean algebraic simplification. If you happen to go, if there's, if there's like two ways to go, it doesn't matter as long as you obey the properties and the identities of Boolean algebra, you'll come, the, the path should come back together in the end. For example, one of the things that I could do is I see that, um, well, I could swap these two and I could have B ORed with A and B or B and A bar. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna swap those two. And then we have B ORed with A and B ORed with B and A bar, okay? Now, from this, I could pull out from this lesson, remember what I did was I used the associative law to go ahead and put parentheses around those two since we have something, a product, or with a product, or with a product. So I'm just simply putting the parentheses around the last two products, the or of the last two products. This guy right here, I could pull out a, pull out a B. So I go B or B and A or A bar. And it looks like we have a red flag here, something being combined with its inverse, specifically ORed with its inverse. So A or A bar, anything ORed with its inverse, this guy is always equal to one. And so what we've got is B or B ended with one. Another red flag. What happens when you AND something with a one? Like multiplication, it just becomes itself. And so this becomes B or B. What happens when you or something with itself? It becomes itself, okay? All right, let's try this a slightly different way. This way is gonna be a little bit more involved, but I'm gonna, gonna separate this. Let's go up here. These two, I'm gonna swap these two. I'm gonna have B or A and B or B. B and A bar, all right? Now, this first one may look a little familiar. It'll probably look a little bit more familiar if I redraw it as B ORed with B and A ORed with B and A bar. Now, if you recall, in the last lesson, we showed that a ORed with AB is the same thing as A, okay? Now, 
this, these first two terms are very similar to this term right here, except the A is serving, the B has been substituted for the A, and the A has been substituted for the B. Well, that means that B or B and A is just equal to these pieces right here. That's just equal to B. All right. Well, it looks like we've got the same thing again, don't we? Something ORed with the product of itself with something else. Wow, let's try that again. It looks, this term right here is the same as this, the same format where B has been substituted for A and A bar has been substituted for B. That just is equal to, the A bar drops out and that's just equal to B. So we took two different paths, got the same result, and showed that A or B ended with B or A bar is just equal to B. All right. Let's do one more. Now, this one, well, may be obvious, may not be. It depends on your experience with simplifying these Boolean expressions. Remember, the only way to get better at this stuff is to practice, all right? So let's do something simple. How about A ended with B ended with C bar, ORed with B ended with C bar ended with D, ORed with A or B bar or C with a bar over the whole mess, okay? Let's simplify this. Now, looking right there, there may be a couple of things that we can see maybe that we could do right up front, but you know, that bar crossing a bunch of, of elements, this, this bar crossing that or, that sum, um, be really nice to clear that up first, wouldn't it? So why don't we use De Morgan's theorem in order to distribute that bar to all of its inputs? Remember that De Morgan's theorem is the way that you can take an inverter at the output of a gate, pass it through that gate to be distributed to all the inputs, but in the process, the OR gates turn to an AND, the AND gates turn to an OR. So the, the process of distributing a bar back through an operation will change the operation. So let's go ahead and apply De Morgan's theorem. So let's just copy down this A, B, C bar, or B, C bar, D, or, and then we've got A, B, and C. Now, and actually, let's not forget the first bar, right? Now, distributing the bar, we take the bar, distribute it to the A, distribute it to the B bar, and distribute it to the C. And in the process, these two ORs become ANDs, all right? Now, this bar bar, that, well, looks a little funny. And in fact, the circuit itself is just an inverter feeding another inverter. What do you think that this is gonna be? Okay, we have A, this becomes A bar, and this becomes A bar bar. What happens if you invert an inverse? Well, just goes back to its original value, right? You can set up the truth table to prove, to prove it so. So this actually should be able to just go to A, B, C bar, or with B, C bar, D, or with A bar, B, C bar, all right? Now it may be a little clearer what simplification needs to be performed. So we have B, C bar, B, C bar, B, C bar in all three of those products. That tells us we can use the distributive law in reverse to pull out an element, specifically B and C bar. If it exists in all of the elements, I can pull it out of all the elements. Now, please understand, if any of the inverters were different, for example, if this happened to have been B bar instead of just B, we couldn't have done it. We have to have the inverses and the not inverted versions the same, the, the, have, the, the inputs have to be the same. So I have B, C bar, B, C bar, B, C bar, pull it out of all three terms. What's left in the first term? A. What's left in the second term? D. What's left in the third term? A bar. All right. All right, so what's next? 
Well, it may not be obvious right, or, right away, but remember, we have those properties, the commutative law, the associative law, the distributive law, and De Morgan's theorem that allows us to move things around so that we can see if something might, an identity might appear for us to drop something out. So I have B, C bar. Inside here, why don't I swap the D and the A bar using the commutative law? And then the associative law allows me to combine those two since we have it across the same operation, the ors, and we have A or A bar. Ha! There's an identity. All right. What happens when you or something with its inverse? Well, anything ORed with its inverse, well, there's, there's two possibilities, right? There's zero ORed with one or one ORed with zero. Always going to be at least one one at the input of that OR gate. So that becomes one ORed with D. Another identity sitting right there, huh? One, there's a constant. One ORed with anything is, well, equal to 1, because there's always going to be a 1 at the input, which means the output of the OR gate is always going to be a 1. Still have another identity. We're anding something with 1. What happens when you and something with 1? The 1 drops out, and you get the something. All right? And that's as far as we can go with this one. But we came a long way, right? Now remember, there are three things that are vital about this simplification. One, and, and there are three results, vital results, because we are coming from a, an expression that has one, two, well, let's go ahead and start with this expression. One, two, three products. Each one of those products, AND gate, has three inputs. We have one, two inverters, and we have one, three input OR gate. What does our result look like? Our result has one, two input AND gate and one inverter. That's a lot, lot more efficient. And remember, the three things. It is faster, it is cheaper, and, and you know, this cheaper is because there are fewer transistors, which means it's also physically smaller, and it also uses less power. That's the physical implementation. When it comes to software, if you were able to simplify a complex conditional statement down, it would still be faster. It would take less memory, be smaller, okay? All right, and that's it for a little bit of simplification demonstration.